So on this particular extension, the measurements are pretty square. Uh, we've got about four and a half metres by four and a half metres. And turning out, the first thing we do is use this string line so we can see from the existing house where we're extending to, we can bring the string line out. So it's tight on the wall and so we can see where it's coming to and then that will give us the straight line for footings and then we've done the same on that side of the house. So once we've marked it out, you can either dig by hand, which takes a long time, but if you've got a digger or you can even hire one, you know, we've dug this out literally in three, three hours, if that. Usually the depth which you're asked to go to is about a metre, but it's at least until you find good ground. So if you're on clay, they want you to find ballast or sand or, or solid ground. So once the concrete's in, it's not gonna move. Um, you can see on this, the existing footing is literally a foot. So the building inspector's seen it. Obviously, we've got to go deeper, but it does prove that years ago, even with a small footing, the house hasn't moved. But in this case, we've gone down a metre. The footing width is about 600. So that gives you a bit of space for your outside brickwork, your cavity, and then your inside brickwork. So weather-wise, generally, anything that's dry, three degrees and rising, you'll find to, um, to do any sort of structure work with concrete, sand and cement. If it's a light drizzle, it's fine. If it's a heavy rain and this is soil, what can happen is this becomes wet and it can start almost backfilling itself. So if it's pouring down with rain, also it's not that safe to be walking around with big barrows of soil or anything. So in the heavy rain, I would say leave it until it eases off. First for health and safety, but secondly, this, this soil here will get wet and start filling itself back in. Uh, the other thing is, is the temperature. If you're pouring concrete or you're laying bricks or blocks, the guide is three degrees and rising. If it's a degree or two less towards the end of the day, you can cover your, your new brickwork or block work with hessian sacks, which keeps the heat in and stops any water in the sand and cement from freezing. So as you can see, we've dug down, we've gone a metre all the way through and round here, and now it's ready for the concrete to be poured. Access is always a big thing when you're digging out around the back of a house. Luckily with this job, we've got a, a carport, if you want to call it that, all the way down the side of the house. So from the front gate, over the drive, down the side, we've got enough room for a digger, all hand tools, all power tools, wheelbarrows, and plenty of space, more importantly, to bring down all your bricks, blocks. You've got bags of sand coming down, bulk bags. If you haven't got that luxury, if you're in a terraced house that you're working in, for example, you've got to bear in mind, you can either try and get in from the back, sometimes there's shared access that runs along the back of gardens. Uh, worst case, it's got to come through the house. If you've got to come through a house, just be honest and look at ways in which you can minimise any damage from the front door out through to the back garden. So the footings are poured. After the digging out the excavation, we've got it completely cleared. Building inspector, first point, the first stage he'll come out and he's been was to check the depth of the footings to make sure he's happy with it. So there's no point in pouring concrete until he's checked it. So he's been out, he's checked with the depths, he's happy with everything. We've had a ready mix lorry to save us knocking it up by hand. We've barrowed it down the side, out the back of the lorry. We've poured and we've pulled our levels across here. So the footings are in today, which means all being well with the weather, uh, we'll be laying bricks first thing in the morning. The concrete we've used, um, when you call up these ready mix companies that basically mix it on the lorry as it's there, um, they will ask you if it's for footings or oversight. There is a slightly different mix. Um, so with this one, obviously footings, and as it comes out, all mixes itself, bar it in, and, it, and then pour in and get your levels from there. So height with the concrete, um, usually two or three of us on the barrow bringing it in, and then one of us jumping on levelling. It's important to tamp it, and you can do it with an edge of a bit of wood, with a, a broom handle or anything, or a proper tool for it. The reason for tamping it, it, it mixes it up and gets all the air bubbles out. Also, it brings the water to the top. So when you get your level, you can then either use a laser level, which you can bring your lines out from, or old school, just use a spirit level on top of the concrete. And on this job, we've poured the new footings to the height of the existing footings. 
And as we said earlier, the existing footings are only about a foot or so, but obviously we've gone deeper with this, but this means that this new, new footing meets perfectly up with the old ones. And then as you can see, we'll bring up brick by brick to match them with the existing.